Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to design wedding invitations in Canva. I am a wedding invitation designer and I use almost exclusively Adobe Illustrator, but I think that Canva is a great option for people who are designing just for themselves or who are just starting out in this industry and aren't quite ready to invest in Adobe Creative Cloud yet. So it is a little less robust than like full-on graphic design programs, but if you are designing something personally, I think it's a really wonderful option and there's a lot of great features here in Canva that I think you'll enjoy. So you can start by creating a design and doing any kind of custom size, but you can also just type in an invitation and it'll come up with like wedding invitation. And since we're on that templates tab, we can scroll through all of these different templates. This is not something that you would want to use if you're kind of commercially designing wedding invitations because you want to create something unique, but these are so, so beautiful. Some of them are for Canva Pro, um, which you can get for about $15 a month. So you could get on and download this, create your wedding stuff, and then when your wedding is over, you don't really have to use it anymore. But you can also use Canva to create signage and all kinds of other things for your wedding. I'll have a link to Canva Pro in the description of this video. All these templates are really beautiful and they're ready to uh, customize and in a lot of cases print. So I'm going to click on this save the date one. And this one is able to be printed with Canva. You absolutely don't have to do that if you'd like to print with any other printer. Um, I have some other videos on my channel about my favorite print shops. But if you are interested in printing with Canva, you can go ahead and put in all of your specs here and see all the pricing. So say we wanted to upgrade to deluxe paper and we wanted to do 100 invitations, we could see it's only 78 cents per piece, which is just absolutely incredible. I love that. And you can read more about everything here. So now we'll go into customize this template. And again, you can order um, printing invitations just by using this print invitations button after you finish customizing it, but you absolutely don't have to do that either. Let's pretend we're not going to print them with Canva and I will make sure to show you how to download it if you're printing it in a different place. So the first thing that you'll probably wanna do is change your photo to make sure your photo works with the color scheme, the fonts, the overall vibe of this. So first pay attention to uh, the shape of this. So it's kind of a tall, it's like a little bit taller than a square. So we want something that's more vertically oriented um, and they are taking up most of the space, but they absolutely don't have to. Um, and then we don't want anything too much on the sides at the top because those are gonna be cut off by the arch. So we'll just go ahead and upload our file. So I'm uploading this picture of my husband and I. It's one of our engagement pictures. And you have something that's a shape like this. You can actually just kind of drag it in there and it's gonna fill up that space. So I kinda wanna move this up a little bit so it's more of us and less of a landscape. So I will just double click on this. And what you see here is we kind of have um, the image now instead of the cut image with an arch. If you're familiar with clipping masks, that's basically what we have here. So I'll move this almost all the way up. I don't want to go too far so it gets cut off. And then I will right click and then I think I want to make it just larger again so that it takes up more of that space because that is just really nice. Make sure we're kind of centered in there visually. And then she's so cute. The color of the background is pretty nice here, but I kind of want to make it a little bit different. I think if we played on like a rusty color, that could be really nice. So let's just pull this image slider and we want to do like kind of a nice rusty color. And I think that looks really good with the photo. Of course, now we need to change the text colors um, and we can do that as well as changing all the fonts. I don't really love this particular font that says Olivia and Daniel and I kind of want it to be on top of the picture. So there's a few things I want to do here. So when I click on the font, I have a few different options and I can click on this little category. So like handwriting, which is really nice. Uh, maybe I like uh, don't love apricots and there's more fonts um, here in the pro section if you want to use them if you have a specific font that you do want to use you can always upload it in here that's only on the pro account um, but it's a good option especially if you have chosen a gorgeous font if you're doing this just for uh, your own personal use then I really like thefont.com for a bunch of free fonts you can click on 
different options like calligraphy scripts, for instance, and there's so many beautiful options. And you could actually um, type in your name here and see what your names are going to look like in all the fonts before you choose, which is awesome. Um, if you're doing this for commercial reasons, I really like creativemarket.com. I sell my fonts there. And you can do the same thing by typing in your name and seeing what they're going to look like before you choose your font. I'll just stick with the ones we have here and choose something I kind of like Brittany. I did find this one called Bimbo that I like here on Canva, just sticking with those free fonts. And I think it's kind of cutesy and adorable and also very different than what we had. So I can show you how much you can customize. Now the text color I think should be white so that it just shows up really well. And I'm gonna move this so it overlaps with the arch a little bit. Let's say we're getting married at a destination wedding and we really want this headline to be um, pack your bags, exclamation point. And then of course we definitely want a more cutesy font to go with the other one that we chose. Okay, I think I'm gonna go with this Cardo font, but we definitely want to change that to white as well and then make it a little bit smaller. Um, I like how it's kind of got an organic feel that goes with um, the other font that we chose. This is definitely a different vibe than the original template that we chose, but I think it's still going to be really cute. And then we'll update the below information. Just move it up a little bit. We definitely want it to be white. And then I'd like it to match that same font that we were using before. Of course, I need to change this to my information, um, but we'll just assume you can do that. We'll make that italics. And then also I just wanna add maybe one or two little elements. So I'll go into our elements up here and I think like a little star or something would be really cute. So let's check out the stars and we can see all these different graphics we can choose from. Um, there's a lot of different options that are free and then some options that are in the pro account only. Um, let's see. I think that this one is going to be really cute. And when I put it on there, you can see that um, the color is already selected as black, but it's e very easy to change. So I'm gonna change it to white to match this. I could even, you know, I could pick like another, like a goldish color or something, but I think we have enough color and I wanna keep it kind of neutral. And then um, we have our recommendations of this other option, which is just kind of the same thing, but it's a little bit crooked. And so it doesn't look exactly the same. I kind of like, kind of like that here. So we don't have an exact copy of the same little star, but we have one that looks cohesive with it. And now I'm second guessing all of that and I think we just need the same one. But I do want this to be facing the other direction. So I'm gonna click flip, we'll flip it horizontal and I'll be facing the other direction. And I think it should be a little smaller. We'll make this one a little bit smaller to match. And of course, I almost forgot to delete this other star that I accidentally clicked on. I always forget, you don't have to double click, you can just single click on all of these, which is nice. But sometimes I forget that. So it's a good thing we remember to delete it. Now I'm a wedding invitation designer, so I want to make sure that this prints as beautifully as possible for you. And um, so when you click share, there's a few things that you'll want to do. So you're going to go into this download section and we will make sure to select this PDF print, which says best for printing. It's pretty easy there. And then there's a few things. So crop marks and bleed, basically um, your printer can't print exactly to the edge of your paper. So if you put in a five by seven piece of paper and then you try to print this design, it's going to print off a little bit and some of the edges will be a little bit white. So what we do to combat that, whenever your design goes to the edge of the paper, and this is going to the edge of the paper, that brown kind of rusty colored background is going to the edge of the paper, um, you're gonna wanna print it a little bit bigger than your final size and then cut it down to the five by seven. That means that you won't have any awkward white spaces on the edges. So that's what crop mics and bleed means. Basically select this if anything on your design, including the background goes to the edge of the paper. And that way it's going to print a little bit bigger than five by seven. And then it's going to give you the, um, the crop marks that will help you cut it to the exact right size. 
Then if you want to flatten the PDF, I do recommend this. Um, the main thing is that when you try to open a PDF, sometimes if your computer or the computer of the printer that you send it to doesn't have the fonts, the images, etc., cetera, um, sometimes there will be an error there or will automatically replace it with a font that they do have or something like that. So typically flattening it is just going to be the best option. Uh, we don't want to include the notes. And then for color profile, this can be a little bit confusing, but if your colors are not printing accurately, this is probably why. Everything in Canva is designed in RGB because it's being shown on screen. RGB is the best way to use colors on screen, but when you're printing them on paper, you almost always want to print in CMYK. So you can do that with Canva Pro. Um, so you want to select CMYK and then you'll be able to download. And I would recommend if you're going to print a lot of stuff for your wedding, just click save download settings and you'll save that. Um, so that you don't have to worry about these things in the future. So again, you want to use PDF print. It says best for printing. That's pretty easy. Select crop marks and bleed. If your design, any part of it goes to the edge of the paper, click flatten PDF just to be sure, and then change your color profile to CMYK. And then this is the PDF that you will get. And as you can see, the brown is going to print a little bit over the edge, and then you'll print right along these black crop marks. That's how you'll trim it with your trimmer um, so that it will have the brown all the way to the edges and you won't have any weird white spots. If you print through Canva, they're gonna take care of all of this for you on their end. So you just go into this print dialog and select everything you need and continue. And their printing is really great quality. So if this was helpful in learning how to design and print your wedding invitations with Canva, I hope you'll let me know if you have any questions and want to see more videos on this. I do have a link that I'll send you for the best pricing on Canva Pro that will allow you to download this in CMYK. It will allow you to use some of those pro elements and some of those pro templates as well. And it's a great option even if you're just doing this for a couple months to do your signage, invitation, save the dates, Etc. for your wedding and you can continue to reuse some of those elements that are already in here so that everything matches and is cohesive. Thanks everyone.